Hello again. What I have here is the JBL Flip 4 Bluetooth speaker, uh, which I did feature in a video uh, quite recently about uh, why you should monitor your mix on a speaker like this. When you feel your mix is nearly complete, listen to it on a variety of systems, including Bluetooth speakers like this one, and just make sure it sounds good wherever it's played back. One of the things I was interested in, though, was how much bass this little gadget can produce. It's got a subwoofer here, and it's got a subwoofer here as well. So that's where the bass is going to come out from. And it's such a tiny little gadget, you'd think, well, there's hardly going to be any bass at all. Bass has two dimensions. One is the sheer volume of the bass, like when it's really rocking the room. And the other is the frequency of the bass. How low in frequency does the bass go? So what I found from this gadget is that it does produce an amazing volume of bass for its size. It's very impressive considering how tiny it is. But I'm also interested in the frequency. How low can it go? So I did a video recently. I called it Bass How High Can You Go, which, which sounds a bit odd, really. But the idea was that uh, I would play a bass guitar sequence and repeat it including the low E, which is about 42 hertz, so that's about as low as, as music in general goes. And put that through a high-pass filter with a steep slope of 24 decibels per octave. And then gradually raise the cutoff frequency of that filter. And so my YouTube viewers could listen to it on their own speakers or their own headphones and work out for themselves when they started to notice the high-pass filter cutting in, so it's, it's actually removing some of the bass that they can hear. So at a sufficiently low point, your speakers can't reproduce that bass anyway, so you don't hear any difference. But as the cutoff frequency rises, gradually it'll come into, your, into the frequency range of your speakers and you will hear the difference. So I'll just show you that video now and you can listen to it yourself and just ask yourself two things. One is when you first think that you can hear the difference, so you can just about hear it. And the second is when you are certain that you can hear the difference. Okay, so here it is now. What I'm going to do is take it away and I'm going to put in a standard EQ. It's going to be the Pro Tools standard EQ, but once again you can use any EQ, any decent EQ plugin, probably the one that came with your digital audio workstation. I'm going to take away the bands that I'm not going to use and I'm going to put in the band that I am going to use. So it's only this band here, which as you can see, is a high pass filter. I'm just going to turn my own monitoring level up a bit. Okay. And a high pass filter, it passes the high frequencies and it cuts the low frequencies. I'm going to use the steepest slope that we have in this filter, which is 24 decibels per octave. So that's going to make the most difference. And uh, what I think I'll do is I'll go to the automation and I'll automate the high pass frequency. That's the cutoff frequency. So once again in your own digital audio workstation you will have the controls to do this. Let me just get rid of this little window pane here. Uh, it's just distracting me. So there we go. I can play it through again. Okay, that's nice. And here, instead of looking at the waveform, I'm going to look at the high pass frequency. So at the moment, we've got this set at the lowest it can be. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this up to, I think about, I've got to think about people who listen on their laptop speakers as well. So I'm going to take it up to 300, about 300 hertz, it doesn't have to be precise. There we go, we're just over 300 hertz. So what I want you to listen to is when do you first notice any loss of low frequency? Bear in mind that the lowest frequency of the bass guitar, the bottom E, which I did include in that, is about, th is about 42 hertz. So at that point, you definitely should start to hear a difference. So keep your eye on the frequency readout here and that will give you an idea of where we are in this. So let's have a go and see what it sounds like.
Okay. So what I'm going to do now is play the same video through my phone to the speaker and I'm going to listen to it and uh, describe what I hear. You're not going to hear the effect because I'm just recording it through a microphone so it wouldn't be a realistic test to say that you could hear the effects. But I'm going to listen to it and I'm going to give you as good a description as I can of how I perceive the bass to be. So the first time I'll play it through, I'm not going to comment and then the second time I'll give you a bit more description. So let me just get my, my phone uh, going here. And here we go. Come on, YouTube. Out here, and that will give you an idea of where we are in this. So let's have a go and see what it sounds like. You should have heard something if you didn't hear. Okay, you can you can be quiet now. <laughs> yes, I certainly heard that. There was a point um, where I could kind of feel that there was a difference, and then there was another point where I'm absolutely certain there's a difference. Uh, the weird thing is, there's quite a distance between those two points. So the point where I was kind of like, yeah, I think I can hear it, was early-ish, and then it was a long time after that, uh, up to the point where I'm saying, I absolutely know that I can hear the difference. So I'm going to play that again, and I'll give you a bit of commentary as we go along. So I'm going to have to try and hold the phone in front of the camera and give you the commentary at the same time. So a bit of multitasking there. Um, what could possibly go wrong? Here we go. Come on, YouTube. Good start to hear a difference. So keep your eye on the frequency readout here and that will give you an idea of where we are in this. So let's have a go and see what it sounds like. I'm just feeling it now. I'm feeling a bit of lightness in the bass. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. It's just, it's absolutely as clear as night and day at that uh, point. Yeah, the bass is really gone. The bass is gone. <laughs> okay. You should have heard some. Shut up, shut up. Any different. You, you've had your day. You're, you're past it now. You're an old timer. <laughs> so uh, there we have it. Um, just from my description, <laughs> because this is impossible to really test properly uh, through the medium of video. What I can say is that the amount of bass coming from this speaker is really impressive, both in terms of the volume of the bass and actually the frequency that it goes down to as well. So I'm not going to say replace your studio monitors with a Bluetooth speaker. I am going to say that a Bluetooth speaker, and this is not an expensive one, can be surprisingly pleasant to listen to. So that's it for today. I'm David Meller, course director of Audio Masterclass, having some fun with a Bluetooth speaker. Thank you for listening. That's for synchronization of the audio and video, if you were wondering. <laughs> See you later.